the Celtics came out and really established themselves early in this game against the Dallas Mavericks, got out to a 29-point lead in the first half, and really, as much as we talked about, you know, this has been a long time coming in terms of talking about this finals because the both the Eastern and Western Conference series were both finished up pretty quickly in the championship round so we've known that this is going to be the matchup for a while and we've known that Kristaps Porzingis was going to be one of if not the biggest X factor in this series he was cleared to play he got hurt in game four of the series against the Miami Heat has missed the last 10 games for the Celtics and he looked phenomenal for them in early on specifically in this game where he just went nuclear in the first quarter showed basically his entire skill set on both sides of the ball where you could see him sort of work himself into a rhythm on the offensive end that sort of mid-range shot specifically at the left elbow is where he really seemed to you know enjoy the matchup and the height differential as obvious of a thing as it is it is just such a mismatch for this Mavericks team that is very much predicated on their interior defense. The fact that Porzingis was just pulling up over defenders at the mid-range, knocking those down, and something that we saw from both Al Horford, Al Horford and Porzingis in this game was the ability to make the Mavericks respect their three-point shooting. Horford has been a little bit up and down in terms of his three-pointers throughout the playoffs so far, but he knocked down a couple right out, right out of the gate. It was clear that the Mavericks were going to guard him on the perimeter. He gave, he got the ball in the corner. He gave Daniel Gafford a pump fake in, drove down the baseline for a dunk there as well. And then you have Porzingis who comes off the bench in this game. Horford started in place of him, and on top of you know pulling up in those mid-range shots, he also was extending the floor out to 29, 30 feet and letting it fly from there. Which again is just something that the Mavericks defense for, I still do believe that they're excellent, but the way to beat the Mavericks really, and we've been saying it through this entire postseason run, is you have to knock down your threes. And if you look at each of the matchups that the Mavericks have played up to this point, there has been a player that they can sort of hide their big man on in terms of not having to pull them all the way out. You go back to the Clippers series, their centers didn't have three-point spacing. Russell Westbrook also was somebody that they were very happy with letting shoot. You have Josh Giddy in the Thunder series. You have Rudy Gobert in the Timberwolves series. So again, just a lot of very prominent pieces of these teams that the Mavericks didn't feel like they had to go out and guard. And you know, obviously, again, Al Horford has had his ups and downs, so maybe he doesn't have it in one of these games, and that's something that the Mavericks will be sort of willing to live with. But it seems like, you know, the way that the Celtics were able to drive into the paint themselves, and that was even with some sort of an attention of guarding the three-point line as well. The Celtics were just getting blow-bys after blow-bys. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown both doing a really good job of getting into the teeth of the defense. And then Brown more so than Tatum finishing at the rim. Tatum was a little bit you know, a little bit more dicey, you could say, in terms of the control of some of his passes. But at the same time, you know, he made some incredible passes out of those drives as well. Six turnovers definitely hurts him. But in general, he did, I think both of these players did a really good job of getting to the rim. And, you know, just sort of, I wouldn't say exposing this Mavericks defense, but again, providing a different look that they haven't seen up to this point. And the Mavericks, as this always works, they're going to be the first team that has to make the adjustment. We'll see how the Celtics react to those adjustments as well. But I mentioned Jalen Brown. He was, you, you can make a great argument that he was the highlight of this game. Although, in general, this was just a very team-centric win for the Celtics. Their top six players all in double digits. And there was... You know, again, some really big impact plays on both sides of the floor from Jalen Brown. You can throw Drew Holiday in that conversation as well. 
I thought that this was just an incredible, you know, top of the rotation performance from the Celtics, but Jalen Brown in this game was the leading scorer with 22 points. We talked about his defense, three blocks and three steals. There was that point in the first half where Luka was just dribbling the ball up the court and Jalen just stripped him clean and got an easy dunk there. But to that idea of Drew as well, you know what? As much as the Celtics built up this 29-point lead, if you've been watching the NBA this year, you know eventually there is going to be that run on the other end that comes. And it really started at the end of the second quarter where the Mavericks sort of started to work their way back into it. The Celtics had some really sloppy offensive possessions and then in, that sort of carried on over into the third quarter and we saw the Mavericks get the lead or the deficit, I should say, all the way down to eight. And that's when Luka was doing his best job of sorting, get, sort of getting inside. It was very clear, and we'll sort of talk about the strategy. You know, the Celtics were very comfortable with letting Luka work one-on-one -on -one and trying to hold up. Now, some of the drives that he had, there was very little resistance, and, you know, that individual defense has to be better. But in general, they were trying to take away that the passing lanes for Luka and he finished with just one assist a season low going back to the entire regular season as well and Mavericks only finished with nine assists total in this game which is just a couple sort of maybe silly numbers to throw out there but the lowest amount of assist, assists from a team in an NBA Finals game since 2007 with the Cavaliers and the nine assists was actually the same number of blocks that the Celtics had on the other end. And that is obviously not a winning recipe for the Mavericks. Ultimately, I think that this was the Celtics showcasing how good they can be. And the Mavericks just didn't necessarily live up to expectations. And I do believe that the Celtics can still go up another level as well because Jason Tatum wasn't necessarily the best version of himself and we're going to be diving into a more in-depth look of his performance and whether or not the Celtics need more from him in the following segment here but before we dive into that ultimately here we have to talk about the fact that Jason Tatum was receiving all of this extra attention and you had these other players for the Celtics that stepped up, notably Jalen Brown on offense, Kristaps Porzingis as well. But on the other side for the Mavericks, you know, I wouldn't say that the Celtics didn't double Luka at all. Like there were definitely, once he got into the paint, there was extra eyes on him and there were always extra eyes on him, but it didn't feel quite as, you know, intent as it was with the Mavericks on Jason Tatum. But the fact that Kyrie Irving wasn't necessarily able to take over his side of the court the way that Jalen Brown and these other players for the Celtics were when they got those sort of miss those numbers matchups you could say with taking advantage of the double teams having the other players step up and there's a whole lot to break down in terms of the Mavericks offense obviously there are some defensive adjustments as well but the Mavericks just never really seemed to get into all too much of a rhythm and in large part it was because of Kyrie Irving who I think that him and Porzingis were sort of neck and neck for who is the player that has the most potential to swing this series and I wouldn't say Kyrie was not good in this game ultimately he got a number of good looks he just missed the good looks he had a lot more success actually you know hitting those difficult shots the one he hit in the first quarter where he was falling away outside of the paint and Al Horford got a hand on it and Kyrie was just able to recollect himself and still get enough power on it to knock that down it was incredible but Kyrie in this game you know we have seen him have some quieter scoring performances through the postseason and ultimately I have defended him especially if you go back to that Thunder series where he only averaged about 15 points per game there were instances where even when he wasn't scoring, he was still having an impact on the game as a whole. I did not feel that he was sort of the chess player that he was in those Thunder series. And in large part, it's because 
the Celtics defenders did a much better job. The Mavericks were really trying to hunt out mismatches. Al Horford, I believe it was 19 possessions where he was the primary defender on the ball handler for the Mavericks. And on those 19 shots, it was something like they were held to one. I know at least if you look at the numbers of Al guarding Luka Doncic, Luka was one of eight, 0 for four on for three when Al Horford was that primary defender. It extends beyond that as well. Kristaps Porzingis was being hunted early on, especially from Luka. Sam Hauser, when he checked in the game, he had a very impactful game off the bench after be really struggling there for at least the Eastern Conference Finals, but going back to Cleveland a little bit as well. So, yeah, this series is by no means over, but we did see some of the you know, glaring issues that could prove to be fatal for the Mavericks. But before we dive into the adjustments that the Mavericks are going to need to make moving forward, I do want to talk about Jason Tatum. Like I mentioned, the box score did not stand out for him by any means, but he, I do believe that he had an impact on the game. And I want to talk about whether or not the Celtics are going to need more of a traditional superstar performance from him from here on out in order to win the finals here. So we are going to be taking a quick break and then we are going to dive into that conversation. Stick with us and we will be right back. 